Okay, welcome everybody to the Tuesday meeting online for Camberley Chess Club. Um, tonight we have Colin Purden, who will be talking about some recent games from the Altibox Norway tournament. So over to you, Colin. Okay, thank you, John. Um, yes, um, uh, two or three weeks ago on the Equivalent Crowthorn meeting, I went through some tactical positions and um, one of the games was uh, quite interesting. So I thought I'd go for the full game in, in, in this meeting. Um, slight apology to the Crowthorn guys is I thought I'd warm up with some tactical exercises. Um, you, you've probably seen them before and no doubt memorised them. So please, no shouting out of the answers uh, for the Cambly guys. So uh, without too much further ado, I'll share my screen. Uh, let me share the whole desktop so I don't get too confused. Well, we can't stop that. Uh, no, that's true. So can you see a web page by any chance? Yeah. OK, thank you. So d d just a background. Last month in, in October, obviously, there was actually an over-the-board uh, Grandmaster tournament uh, played at full-time control. Just, just six players. I don't know if they've got a rule of six in the way, uh, but nonetheless, there were six players and they played each other twice. So more or less 10 rounds. I say more or less because in the event that the long play game was drawn, they played a an Armageddon game at a fast time rate in order to get a winner for that game. And looking at the standings, you can see, um, well, first of all, you can see that Magnus Carlsen won it. Uh, and second of all, you can possibly see that the score's out of a different total. And that, I think, or I assume, reflects whether or not, well, how many of the games finished decisively and how many times they had to play a, uh, an Armageddon. Uh, I have to say, there was a lot of fighting chess and a lot of good chess in this tournament. Um, I totted them the, it up uh, early this evening, and uh, there were 18 out of the 30 games were actually decisive in, in the long play phase. Um, so, you, you know, it wasn't a sort of a draw fest by any means. That, that had a slightly peculiar scoring system. Uh, as I recall, it was three points for a win in the classical game, or was it two? Three might... there. Uh, I beg your pardon? There's three there. It is three. Oh, all oh, oh, right. Well, well read. I was trying to remember it. Um, thank you. And um, if if you get a draw in the classical game, well, you can read as well as I can. It's uh, they get one point. Uh, and if they and if you win the Armageddon you get one and a half points for that round. So uh, quite an interesting scoring system, which in, which in itself probably leads to a high number of decisive games in the, in the classical play. So, well, you can see who the players were. Uh, Carlson won it ahead of a number of elite grandmasters. Uh, Ali Reyes is 17 year old, still up and coming, obviously, uh, grandmaster of considerable strength. Uh, the the weak duffer of the tournament, a Norwegian grandmaster called Sari, had a, had a grade of merely twenty six thirty three, and as you can see from his score, scoring three and a half points, he had had a pretty torrid time of it. Uh, but um, hopefully a learning experience for him. But it, it possibly really does show the gulf between uh, true elite players and. Um, and uh, you know, you'll run off the mill strong grandmaster. Is Tari is Tari a youngster? I've, I've never heard of him. He, he, I don't know his exact age. I, I was following it. You could see him. He looked to me like he was a young, a young grandmaster in his early twenties, let us say. Mm. So um, he might have been the world junior champion at one point, just a few years ago. He's so, twenty-one. Mm. Twenty-one. Thank you. Thank you. So it's, again, an improving player. Obviously, um, a local player, which is perhaps why why they decided to to mm. invite him, give even more interesting interest to the Norwegians than just having Magnus in it. I, I don't know, mm. but um, yeah, 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 obviously a very good player. 
but uh, still a little bit outclassed in that company. Anyway, uh, without too much further ado, go back into what, what I'll do, if, if, as, as I said earlier, is have a look at a couple of uh, positions which had a tactical finish and, and then go through one of the games which um, st stood out for me, just a, a personal choice if you, if you like. I happen to like the game. So, if I can find it. Okay, uh, can you see that, the position on the board? Yeah. <clears throat> thank, you, thank you. So, this is from Carl, one of Carlson's games against Duda. We'll be going through the other one in, in full a bit later. And earlier on, Carl, Carlson had sacrificed a pawn in order to get the two bishops and uh, decent peace play. So it's black to move here, and he decided to play queen takes pawn. No doubt thinking that it would be quite pleasant to have a queen swap uh, and be two pawns up. So the question for you is, what did white play next? Uh, yeah, yeah, don't shout out the answers. Think about it for a bit, and I'll ask you in a, in a minute or so, if that's OK. Well, it's only actually got one move, which, which gives him any advantage, but it, but it does win. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, does somebody want to, to say the yeah. answer? Got it. Yeah, yeah, Steve? Knight F6 check. Knight F6 check. Very good. Oh, and yeah. if pawn takes knight? Queen takes pawn on E6. Yeah. Picks up the rook. Yeah, indeed. And all the night. So probably both. And yeah. the move actually played in the game. He didn't take the night. Uh, he actually played something else. King H8. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same thing, to be honest. Uh, still Queen takes pawn. And, and everything's on praise, pretty much. <laughs> After... After rook there, I guess you can just take the knight with the rook. <clears throat> and the move in the game, the last move in the game was rook a8, and uh, Garson simply took the knight. Uh, the, the obvious thing that if pawn takes knight, bishop takes pawn, is mate. <laughs> okay, well done, everybody. Oh, moving on to the next one. Okay, uh, slightly harder on this. So this is Carlson's game as black against uh, Tari. And uh, you can see, again, <laughs> it's quite an interesting position, really. Mm. Carlson, he, ha he hasn't sacrificed a pawn, but he has sacrificed his, his pawn structure. All of his pawns are isolated and in one case tripled. Mm. Uh, yeah, but obviously Carlson's got the two bishops and he's got an open file uh, against the White King. Tari here played Rook F3. So, um, how did Black continue here? It's a very strong continuation. It doesn't win instantly, but it does, it does win, basically. I've turned off the... Uh, oh. I think I can see it. Okay, yeah, 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 let's give it a, another half minute or so. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, sorry, I was trying, yeah, I was trying to turn on, I've, I've turned off, I can't see uh, people, so you might all be making rude gestures to me or something, I don't know. Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all right, as long as I know. Well, we'll shout out you, Colin. Okay, that, that's nice of you. Uh, okay, John, far away. Well, my first thought is rookie one. Rookie one, nice move. Yeah. That was indeed played. Uh, the idea being to... Deflection. Deflection, exactly. Yeah. So, um, 
Rook e4 was another strong move. Uh, so the computer tells me, but rook e1 is clearly the strongest move. So white's pretty well got to take it. Black takes on d4 and puts another piece pointing at b2, obviously. So, yeah, so very nice. White's only defence, the only way he can defend the b2 pawn and keep his queen is to play queen b4. But black simply sidesteps it. Mm. So, um, so b2 falls. I'll, I'll, there, there are quite a few more moves. So if I may, I'll play through them relatively quickly just to see the sort of attack that Carlson did get by doing this. Yeah. Uh, Tari tried to mix it up with d6, hitting the queen. Carlson sidestepped. Queen a5. Trying, I don't know, just getting the queen out of the way, I guess. And Carlson took the bishop. Rook takes pawn check, also one. King there. Bishop e5. I'll, I'll just play through the remaining moves because I thought the way it finished was actually quite nice. Rook takes rook. King takes rook. And takes his pawn. So it's kind of, um, you can see that white, white's king is pretty uh, precariously placed, but it's still what I'd call a genuine exchange sack. You know, black hasn't got a, a foot, apparently he hasn't got a force mate, mate yet. So the big threat here is queen d4. And Tari tries to run away. Queen d4 anyway, hanging the pawn. But White's got, uh, White's got no checks here. Hmm. And he tries to keep the, the queen out. Sorry, quite a long uh, variation there. Queen takes pawn check. So White's got to protect the rook, which is otherwise hanging. <clears throat> and he brings the uh, another check White takes. Takes. Now this is this is where I think it's quite nice. It looks um, almost innocuous the way Carlson's played it. But if King takes Bishop, Queen G5 check, King there, and Queen there is mate. Oh. The, the, <laughs> the unfortunate position of the rook is uh, it's causing quite a problem. So he takes it with the rook. There's no real escape. Check. The point being if King E4. I mean, D3 is mate. And I'm sure, without mm -hmm. any doubt, that Carlson had analysed this all out uh, from a long way back. So he puts the rook in the way. Check. The only move, if he goes king f4 to stay into uh, to queen e5 is mate. I just love all these little mates with, uh, with, with the queen, you know, the king on the open board. almost problem like isn't it? it it is it is so king d4 queen e1. sorry uh, i've missed out yeah. to move uh queen e1 check king d4 queen e5 check king takes c4 and now he just picks up the rook pick, pick up the queen e5 so oh queen e2 take, check take it back go on no it doesn't work okay he's got rook he's got rook um where oh, yeah, uh, I mean, it, it could be that there's more than one win. Uh, I think he just chose a pretty, yeah, an obvious, mm -hmm. perhaps a pragmatic way of doing it. And because the queen's on this diagonal, he's got there's, there's no real danger of um, of white getting a perpetual or anything like that. You know, he's um, he, he's basically well covered. White tried king d6. Not totally sure why. Bishop c8. And again, the black king's well covered, so white resigned in this position. Mm. So, yeah, that was that. And the final exercise for you is oh, there two. Oh no, no, no! It's the uh, it's the other game against uh, Tari. Let's get rid of that one. Do you think Tari was involved in the? Games console industry many years ago. <laughs> it's Atari, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Could well be. Yeah, I wonder if he gets accused or computer help. I don't know. <laughs>
that before your time, Magnus? Yeah. <laughs> it's an antique, time, antique video game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my goodness, yeah. OK, so here's the other game he played against the same opponent, Tari. Uh, Carlson's white, and as you can probably see, uh, this knight is completely dominating the... Oops. Oh. oh, no, did I show the move? No, you didn't. I'm a set. Good. Uh, uh, White's rook is ideally placed, White's queen is ideally placed, and all of Black's pieces are passively placed. So, oh, okay. So it's Black to move in this position, and uh, White's massive threat here is simply to play knight f6, followed by queen h7 mate. Yeah. Uh, so, Black played pretty well the only move to avoid that in any way. And he's intending to meet, meet knight f6, which wasn't played. Rook takes knight, check. Queen takes pawn. Well, he's got uh, a pawn for the exchange and will probably, well, uh, it, it's, I'm, I'm sure it is winning, but I wouldn't like to call it trivial. Maybe it is at their level, I don't know. So, um, what Carlson could have played here was Queen H4, and then he's threatening Knight F6 again because Black can't take twice because the Bishop on F8 hangs, and he probably can't stop it because if he tries tries to get out of it um, some other way, if he moves the Bishop, for example, Queen H8 comes in and is checkmate. But Carlson found a a prettier win, let's let's say. So again, I'll give you a little bit of time. Can you find the move Carlson actually played to win? Hmm, I think so. I have an idea. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I'll give it a few seconds, Martin, and then uh, and then ask you to contribute the answer or the idea. In, in fairness, I think there's you know, mo most legal moves that white plays actually preserve the win because there's not a lot black can do about it. But uh, I am talking about a fairly forcing continuation. Hmm. For white here. Yeah, I think I'll set. Okay, Martin, far away. Well, I'm assuming we want the rook on f7 out the way, so we play rook a7. Rook a7, okay. Uh, and if I take? Then I stick the knight into f6 as planned. Right on f6 as planned, okay. Can I escape with king f7? King f7. Well, I think I think Queen Queen H seven, mm. Bishop interposes, and then we go Queen G. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Okay, Queen check. King there is forced, ah. and Queen mate. Bishop check or Knight D six. Queen eight mate. Take the Bishop. Oh, Queen eight mate. Queen eight mate. That is oh. very good. Okay. Yeah. Well, Carlson missed yeah. that. I'm afraid. Yeah, but he didn't have to inter interpose the bishop. No, he didn't. Well, didn't oh, right, he does, did. actually. He does. He oh, did. yes, the king oh. hasn't got a square. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, Carlson I... missed the best line, Martin. Uh, did he play queen a6? He, he didn't play rook a7, actually. Did he play uh, queen a6, Colin? Sorry. No, he didn't. He didn't play queen a6? No. Nope. That's pretty good as well. Okay, well, let's have... Him, so, so, sorry, let, 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 what's wrong with rook a7 though? So rook there, knight there. So do you no, have no. anything apart from... Uh, uh, you, could play, you, you could play queen takes, couldn't you? You could play queen takes knight. You could play yeah. queen takes knight. And tuck out the ending. Yeah. Yeah. But and, and you do have rook, bishop and pawn for the queen. It's not completely resignable. No. It's got the queen's going to run around the back and do all sorts of damage. After rook a7, um, 
as as black got bishop e7. It, it's, sorry, Mark, you could well be right. There's still an ending, isn't it? it you know, it's... Um, uh, oh. Yeah, that's the other moves there, mustn't it? Rook a7, bishop e7, what happens after? Yeah, okay, sorry. Well, no, you, can pick, you can pick up pawns, can't you? You can pick up pawns and start. And, and what, and something takes bishop? Take it all off, yeah, and then play g6 and f5, and then, you know. You'd almost play knight f6 check here, actually. Uh, I just take it off and take on g6 and take on f5 with the pawn or something new, or with the queen. Yeah, maybe. so knight takes bishop check, rook takes knight is forced. Oh, and swap off again? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. Wouldn't rook a8 no, yeah. be yeah. rook a8 check earlier. So, yeah, this no, is no, winning. This is winning, isn't it? Completely yeah, this is totally winning. winning. Yeah, because yeah, you're, you're going to be two pawns up now, and you're probably going to be able to swap the queens off, I think, with the check. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but rook a7, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> rook, I, 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 think, I think black probably does have to go for this ending. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I don't know what the assessment is. Um, I suspect that white's queen is going to be very active, but I, I'd hesitate to say it was a forced win from here. Yeah, well, you can pick up the rook, can't you? Queen, queen, queen h8, check. Uh, then you come across to d8. Here. D, no, d8, check. D8. Oh, d8, check, sorry. Df7. Well, you went the deep on there. True, yeah. No, We're not going to have a rook, though, is it, though? No. It's pretty good though. I would pick up the rook, but it doesn't, does it? Okay. Yeah. Picks up I, I think all this is showing the strength of White's position, to be honest. Um, as That's I true. recall, the, the, yeah. So oh, yeah. anyway, uh, well, it wasn't what Carlson played. So he didn't play Queen H6? No. So Queen H6, King there, then what? And knight f6. Well, that kind of forces rook takes knight. Yeah, pawn takes. Queen takes. You can play rook takes bishop check. You can play rook takes bishop check and go into that. Oh, I don't know if you can, because you can interpose the queen. Uh, rook takes bishop check, queen takes, queen takes pawn check, queen there forces the queens off. Pawn takes pawn. Uh, yeah, it does, but you've got pawn takes. Yeah, that's true. There, there are it's many only people. equal, though, isn't it? Uh, it's only equal, Colin. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah. Not even been wouldn't better. it? Uh, no, hold on. Wouldn't it be better to um, exchange queens? Um, to, to exchange queens, because then yeah, the king can better. come forward and protect that f5 pawn. Uh huh. But it's still equal. You can't get no, there. No, he doesn't it's get there in time. time. Hmm. We still haven't found Carlson's move, have we? I'm afraid not. No. Okay, can we have another quick look? Uh, I should think so. Have I got the right position? Yes, I think I have. Yep. Not rook oh. takes bishop. No. Nope. Correct. Not rook takes bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not king g3? <laughs> well, well, do you know, I, I was watching this as the commentary was taking place on chess 24, and, and Kramnik was suggesting c4. <laughs> well, so I think it's a hilarious move, really. I think it's, and it's also a very good move. I think it might even be the second best move. What about knight c7? Right. Uh, one second, sorry. Uh, I'm desperately... What am I looking at? I don't know what I'm looking at. No, oh, that thing. Knight yeah. c7. Well, rook takes knight, I guess. 
No, that loses immediately. Three and H6. Three and H6 wins, surely. Oh, good, very good point. But no. uh, just move the queen, don't you? What's the threat? 98 check. No, the threat is queen H6 followed by queen T6 if you move the queen. Right, C7. Oh, yeah, yeah, these are all good lines. But, um... Well, it looks quite, uh, quite forcing. There's 97 wins. Is Colin the one that Carlson played? And I know I happen to know what it is because I've seen you show this before. Yeah. Was that? Did you? Did you? Is that the best move, or is that? Is that not? No, the it's, best? it is actually the best move. Okay. It is, but a lot of moves are completely winning. It must be said, though okay. most of them just preserve the win rather than force it. If you know what I mean. Well, yeah. So ninety seven. I've got well, another seven that does look very uh, convincing. I must say. How about Rook A one? That, that's tempting, actually, isn't it? I, I'd like to see mm. what's wrong with knight c7. This just looks crushing, doesn't it? Uh, let's play queen ugh, anyway. Queen somewhere. Say there. I don't know why, but say there. Queen h6. Queen h6. Okay. King there. Queen h Okay. Oh, dear. And back yeah. wins. And g5 is falling. Yeah. Oh, but you probably okay, isn't it? I don't know. Just analyze it, wouldn't you? Are you you, are queen queen six, six, Jack? you 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 can do you can do rook f six rook f eight check first. Yeah, queen e six. Oh, queen e six. Yeah. Check. Why, why not take with the rook and then you fork the king uh oh no, yeah. Mm. I'm still not convinced by this though. I am not convinced by this. Well it's at least equal, it's not losing, but Queen F seven even? I'm still on G f f five. Yeah. Uh, and, and even King H eight. I don't. Oh no, not King move. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Uh, what a, uh, King H seven is interesting, actually. Yeah. After um, after Queen F seven, Rook uh, Rook takes Bishop. No, it's not enough. King takes Queen C seven. Oh. Oh. Queen C eight. Sorry. Queen C eight. King E seven. No checks. Knight D5. 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 Uh, yeah, but take twice on f8 and then take on f5. Yeah, well, you could have played, um, you could have played, you could have played rook f8 first. What well, here? No, queen, queen e6. Can I change my mind and move my king now? Oh, okay, just to annoy everybody. That's massively annoying, Colin. Thank you. Mm. That was the only reason I suggested it. It's <laughs> no good, but. <laughs> Queen h6. Well, queen h6 check. King g8. Now rook takes. Knight e6 doesn't look good. Knight e6 looks the best move there. Yeah. Knight e6. Quite good, doesn't it? Looks fairly winning. Only slightly winning, I'd have said. No, you got rook g5. No, no, the knight's on the right. Yeah, no, 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 bishop's Oops. pinned. Bishop's pinned. Mm. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah, yeah. This looks quite decent, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it looks winning. So we've okay, barely Rick found a move that doesn't win so far. Okay, Rook has seven. <laughs> 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 Perhaps I should have said that. What, what, what move doesn't win? <laughs> Any king move. I think this wins as well. You just swap everything off on F8 and play Pawn takes Pawn again. Yeah, yeah that's right. <coughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, very good. Okay, Knight C7 must be a winning move. Well done, everybody who suggested it. Was that Steve? What did Magnus play, though? Not Knight F6. Knight E7. Correct. Not, not Knight F6. That is the position. Yeah. Knight F6, Rook takes Knight. Knight E7. Interference. 
That interferes with White's winning prospects, I'd have thought. Oh, does it? Uh, okay. oh, sorry, no, E7. No, E7. Uh, Can't oh, take okay. the bishop. Can't take the bishop. Can't take the Queen, Queen H8, mate. Uh -huh. That doesn't work. No, no, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? What's wrong with Queen? Yeah, Rook takes. Queen takes. Oh, queen takes. Queen takes, not Rook takes. There's no mate. Yeah, Rook takes hangs the bishop after Queen H6. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, so you got... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not, <coughs> excuse me, not quite sufficient. Okay, let's go back. Can we try rook a1? Okay. I mean, that's just such a, a tempting idea, isn't it? Uh, that's an alpha zero type of move. Yeah. Well, I thought of it. Uh, King g8. He's got oh, the, yeah. the exchange, I think. Oh, King g8 and bishop g7. Yeah, I think he's got to get played something like that, hasn't he? Now, Bruce Lee's 7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you check. What? H7 check. It'd be the rook all the way back to A1. It might have been better Ooh. to check. That's pretty Play knight F7, 6 earlier. Or knight F6, yeah. You could have played knight F6 earlier. No, this is better. Move the rook back and forth. It's great. <laughs> I like that, yeah. Uh, but does it actually work? But what's he play? I don't know. Um, Queen C8. Yeah. The horrid, the horrid grovel. Uh, Queen takes G6. Mm. Yeah, munch pawns. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? It does look pretty good. Yeah, okay. I'm not disagreeing with this uh, idea, but I need Did you play with K1 either? No, he didn't. Oh, blast. I hope I didn't give it away there. How do I get that back without uh, putting that, that, that lot up again? So this is position. Rook A1. King G8. Can I <coughs> escape by playing Rook B7 here? No, I can't is the answer to that question. Rook D7 maybe. <coughs> Can I try, the, try that? Knight F6. Oh, Knight F6 here. Oh, God, that's crushing, isn't it? Yeah, good point. Okay, I think we're going to have to reward points for uh, Rook A1 as well as Knight C7. <laughs> there, Rook there. Rook G7. Defend the G6 pawn. Knight F6. Mm. Yeah, defense. It might hold on for a bit. I can't sound wildly enthusiastic about this. Okay, all good moves. Let's go. We're spending far more time on this, but <laughs> no, I anticipated. Perhaps it's not a great choice because there's multiple answers. So, any final guesses at what Magnus actually played? It's, I, I think it's the prettiest move on the board. Knight F4. <laughs> Knight f4, arguably... Pretty is, but I can't see any point to it. <laughs> no, I think you just take it, don't you? Oh, not rook e8. Have you looked at rook e8? Rook e8? <laughs> What's the move he played? Just looking at that, yeah. Oh. So, um, yeah. there's not really a huge amount you can do. You've got to take it. If you go here, queen h6 check. King there, queen takes pawn check. King, uh, well, yeah, if bishop there, what, oops. Can't play bishop there. You can't play bishop there, good point. And rook g7, you play knight f6 check. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And make very shortly. King h8, I'll play knight f6 here anyway. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it take that's time. nice. Contact. So, you, so really, you've got to take the rook. So, what's the follow up? Queen h6. Yep. King g8. Yeah. Then what? Well, I've just got to think about this. Mm -hmm. Knight f6. Queen g6. Queen g6. And what is bishop g7? Knight f6 check. Knight, knight, knight f6, f6 check. check. And I think that is so beautiful. The bishop's pinned, and the rook's pinned. 
Uh, and uh, the king can't move. And well, the king, yeah, the king can't move basically. Well, and 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 you drop wow. the queen. The king okay. can move, but he ain't. Yeah, he, it's yeah. too many pieces for the queen. Uh, uh, and you get. Hold on, what's the wrong? The king F8. Queen, but all your pawns are dropping. What so, happened to king F8 here? Knight well, takes queen. Or there, Steve. Oh, oh yeah. No, yeah. yeah, just knight takes queen. Knight takes queen. Quite take take good against that. <laughs> yeah, taking all the pawns. Yeah. So, so he went to h8, and now queen h5 check or knight. No, no, knight f6 anyway. Knight f6 anyway. You can't queen stop. G8. You really can't protect the queen and stop queen g8 mate at the same time. So, tight resigned here. Mm, brilliant. What, yeah, what brilliant. Combination or position. Yeah. And what I liked about it most of all, he 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 did a quick pre-match inter post-match interview rather, and he said, "Well, maybe it would have been more logically consistent just to play Queen H4 and F6." And what I like about Rookie Eight was he didn't have to do it at all. <laughs> he, he obviously mm. just did it because he liked the look of it. Okay. <coughs> okay. Well, well done, everybody. A lot of um, uh, yeah, good ideas there. I thought. So that brings us on to the main event, uh, as it were. I hope anyway, <coughs> which is uh, his other game against uh, Duda. In the first game, he played that knight f6 check that we saw in the first uh, tactical example. Here, Carlson is black against Duda, and I'm not totally sure why I like this game. It's obviously a high quality game given the two players concerned. But I also thought it was just such a good fight between the players as well. You know, they were both going going for each other. So here we go. Duda opens e4, and Carlson plays with the Karo Khan. And uh, there's, a, there's a two or three Karo Khan players here, so we'll see what, what transpires. e4, d5. Mm. He plays knight c3. Now, the most common move here. Oh, well, it's, it's exactly what Carlson played. Pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn. Yeah, transposes, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I, I, was, I was getting uh, ahead of myself there. So the, the sort of, well, the, the most common move here is bishop f5. Uh, another move is knight d7, yeah. preparing to bring one of the yeah. knights to f6 without ruining your pawn structure. But Carlson knight played, f6. Yeah. Yeah, knight f6 is a move, uh, relatively uncommon, but um, still played often enough. All the rage in the 80s, wasn't it? It was all the rage in the 80s, exactly, Steve. And ha in the 80s, how they have recaptured? G. G. Exactly. And... Larson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, played in the 80s, possibly even earlier than that in the 70s by mm. Adventurous Spirits. And the idea is, is that you get quite an aggressive game. Uh, Black's opened up the G-file, should White Castle that side. And he's already got play for White Castles the other way. So an aggressive system by Black. Um, and, but in this game, and a variation which is pretty, very much in vogue at the moment, or at least relatively in vogue, uh, Carlson actually took with the King Pawn. Mm. And... In, in the past, this has always sort of been a poor cousin on, on this line, uh, you know, compared to the, this line, where whereas the other line was sort of seen as an aggressive attempt for Black to play for a win, uh, which is not that easy to do. Well, in my experience, it's not that easy to, to do in the main line of the, the Karo Khan. Um, you know, I think this has always sort of been a sort of an attempt to equalise. It's a trendy right. move in this variation. It, there is, and you obviously, I'm, I'm going to put that up as a quiz question a bit later, Julian. I suspect you know what it is. <laughs> well, people keep playing it against me. I've had it three times now. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I'll put it up as a quiz anyway and see if people other than you can, can guess what it is. I think Caution I played this against Karpov many years ago, Colin. Oh, okay. Okay. I think I vaguely remember that. I, I, I'm, well, Korchnoy, obviously an aggressive player. Um, uh, I don't know. <coughs> Played it as an attempt to equalise, or um, or what? Probably not. So, yeah, what has Black got for his double pawn? 
Uh, well, he's not behind in development. Uh, and I guess he's got a bit of play against the white deep or so. But it's still an interesting opening idea. White wants to put his bishop on d3, so he protects the d pawn first. Yeah. Bishop d6, bishop d3, normal development, <coughs> queen c2. So this is White's main idea. He wants to put a lot of pressure on this diagonal. So Black plays a check first, forcing them. White plays his knight to e2. So now Black's got to, got to think. What's he going to do about the, term, the threat to his h pawn? So up to about three or four years ago, there were, well, two or three main moves considered. I think the most common move was h6. h6. Yeah, uh, which obviously defends the pawn. Is it a bit passive? I don't know. Um, and white would castle King. probably king side, but arguably king, but occasionally queen side too. Put his knight on g3, and the knight could go to f5 or h5 without too much danger of being molested because of the, the battery along this file. He could, and it has been played, play g6. H4. H4 just walks into an attack. Yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be an error. Yeah, I think I think it probably is. I think it probably is an error. White, you know, you're just giving white too much here. And the other move, well, two other moves he's played with, another move he's played with is King mm -hmm. H8. Yeah. Daring uh, white to take the pawn to follow up with G6, where white probably doesn't get enough for the piece, or at least not, not enough to win. Uh, so, and F5 is a sort of <coughs> kind of interesting pawn sack where black probably doesn't quite get enough for the pawn. Though he does get play, given that it's not that easy for white to castle immediately because of the hanging knight and black may try and play himself. Probably not very good though. But about three or four years ago, a new move, or a pretty new move, came into vogue. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure from Julian's comment that he, <laughs> he knows very well what it is. And it's the move Carlson played in this game. So can you guess what uh, what the move is? I saw it. <laughs> oh, you saw it, did you? Damn. Did, yeah, I, did I show it by mistake? Yeah, I, was, I won't say what it was. Okay, thanks, Colin. I was quite surprised though. It's not H5, is it? It is H5. Yeah, it's H5. Yeah. And it looks like a move from outer space, really, just um, yeah, yeah. moving a pawn to an unprotected square in front of your king. Uh, <coughs> it, well, it has become the most common move in this position in my database, not, not compre comprehensive by any means. Uh, but in the past three or four years, it's overtaken all of the other moves. Uh, and I'm sure part of it is computer... Uh, supported and I've got to say that in practice this move scores about 50% whereas the other alternatives I, I mentioned score about 40% so it does actually seem to be not bad and What's the idea coin? Yeah good question um, so one idea is to play against this knight so the knight's obviously pinned at the moment but assuming say white castles then you play h4 which kind of stops the knight going to g3. Okay. And if the knight goes there, it's arguably not that happy, really. You, you can play queen c7 immediately, forcing g3. And then you'd probably play your knight over to the king side. And you could even start considering later in the game ad advancing <coughs> inside pawns. But I, th I think this is one of the main ideas. It's directed against that knight. <laughs> And against White himself playing a pawn storm on the king side, you kind of slow it down. You know, White might play a g4, h4 idea, and um, h4 kind of discourages that. So but why if, why wouldn't White want to play g3? Knight f4 followed by g3. I don't I don't see what's oops objectionable uh, for White about playing g3. So knight f4 coming there, g3. Well. Okay, fair question. Is it? 
I mean, there might, there might be a very good reason, but I, I, I would, no, no, I would no, appreciate I an explanation if, 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 if there's something fundamentally wrong with G, you know, G3. No, I don't, I don't think there is. I'm not um, claiming a... Is it disadvantageous for white? I, I don't know. The, H3? No, he can't wait. Yeah, Black could go H3 now, couldn't he? Yeah, he could. I mean, he could leave so, the pawn there as well, because white can't, white can't take because the knight's hanging. Yeah. Uh, oops. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I think what it strikes me is that, that, that white, white's bishop isn't very good. Black's bishop hasn't got very many squares to go to. Where's his knight going to? The, the knight goes to f8 and somewhere good after that, he said vaguely. <laughs> uh, well, maybe, well, maybe e6. e6, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think. No, no you're right, Steve. It isn't. Uh, it is, <laughs> perhaps, it, perhaps it's what white wants to play. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure how white, I mean, white can obviously develop with bishop d2 and rook e1 and, and so on and so forth, but I'm not sure what white's um, yeah, overall well, I, is there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying it's, um, it, it's yeah. um, necessarily great for white, but it was, it was sort of sounding a bit that bishop d6 followed by queen c7 was, was, was forcing, G, forcing an error out of white, namely g3, which I don't, don't really yeah, see. Fair, fair enough, Steve. Maybe, oh, excuse me, maybe I, maybe I overstated it. I, I guess black can also play c5 in this sort of position. Ooh. And knight c6 and be a bit more active. Not sure. Not sure. Any, anyway, I just think it's interesting that uh, at this H1 move does have some sort of positional basis. This mm. H5 move has some uh, positional basis. So anyway, Duda had different ideas. He played bishop e3. I'm looking at the wrong game for my crib sheet. Carlson developed and Duda. So it's a big choice for white. Does he go queen side or king side? I think they're both valid. I'm not saying black's better here or anything like this if, if white castles king side. And dude, uh, aggressive player, uh, decides to um, castle. And it, this position's been reached a few times. And knight f8 is by far the most common move when it happens. The idea of bringing maybe the bishop to e6 and the queen to a5 or something along those lines. Carlson has different ideas and plays b5. I guess trying to get something going on the queen side a bit quicker. So Duda replies with pretty much the the you know the most aggressive move if you like. He tries to undermine the, these weakish pawns. What white's pretty well developed uh, uh, and black's fucking about with his pawns on the uh, on the wings so d5 a strong move I, I think it's easy to see that if black takes that pawn then after a move bishop takes pawn that um he, he's going to come under a lot of pressure on the d file and the knight's coming into d4 and so on so carlson doesn't allow that and he plays c5 himself. Wow. Yeah, so things are starting to hot up a little bit. Um, obviously, uh, both players are thinking about attacking, <laughs> attacking the opponent's king, pretty much. So, what, did do, what would you do here as white? It's not, it's not a combination, there's no combination. Whip it off. Yeah, and that's what Duda did. So I'd have been, I'd have been quite reluctant to do that. And it is the best move. It must be said. Um, it looks a bit dangerous to open up the B file in front of your own king, but I think equally it could be regarded. It could be dangerous not to take the pawn and let them start rolling mm -hmm. with C4, A5, and B4 maybe. So Duda whipped it off. Carlson grabbed the file. And Duda defended his bishop. <coughs> Carlson booted the, pit, the bishop back to a4. So this bishop isn't exactly doing nothing really. I think it's still quite useful on this diagonal. Putting b8 square and pinning this knight at least temporarily. And, and the only way for, for Carlson to actually make progress against 
the king's side after b3 is to is to sacrifice the exchange for this bishop as we will see so carlson steps out of the pin presumably preparing to activate his knight and, uh, <coughs> and carlson places his knight in the middle of the board very strong moves by both players So I guess there's a tactical point to that. Knight takes h5 can be met by bishop g4. G <coughs> excuse me. Actually, if you excuse me for 10 seconds, I'll just get some water. Well, while we're looking at this position, I was surprised um, Carlson played rook e7 and didn't do the knight move first because... He can move his rook up, can't he, to b4 and things uh, like that? Which is pin. This rook takes c8. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. Knight e4. Nice centralised knights, and they've both got their knights and, and good squares. And Carlson forces uh, b3. I, I guess uh, if you play bishop b3, you advance the a pawn. And Carlson prepares to open the, the B file by sacrificing the exchange. So, very tense position. I think the position is about equal. Uh, you know, uh, neither side has any significant advantage. Oh, uh, sorry, I went too quickly there. Bishop D2. Duda, I guess Duda's forcing the issue and maybe planning to put his bishop on, a, on the long diagonal. Right. So rook takes bishop, pawn takes rook. So one, two, three, four, five, six. What? Oh uh, yeah, so Carlson sacrificed a pawn earlier and now he sacrificed the exchange. So it's the exchange and the pawn down. But obviously the white king is feeling a little bit exposed, I'd imagine. Well, if he plays queen b6, he's threatening knight takes c4. Yep, he doesn't play queen b6, but... Um, uh, it, it's arguable. Oh, actually, if this play knight takes bishop, well. yeah, and, and you probably lost a tempo compared to not playing queen b6. But um, I suspect that was still an idea, and, and we do get similar ideas later on in the game. But Carlson uh, develops his last piece, and mm -hmm. maybe now queen b6 is really an idea because the knight's pinned. So um, all of Black's pieces are quite cohesively developed, but he doesn't really have a direct threat at the moment. Didn't uh, Duda have a chance to play knight takes bishop a couple of moves ago? Well, I think he could have done, well, to be fair. You know, um, so, relative to that. Instead of bishop d2, for example? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think yeah. he could have done. Black's got nothing better than to take it, I suppose. Or and play bishop d2 now if he wanted to. Yeah, because white's material up, so I'm thinking... You know, general principle is if you material up, try and swap off. Yeah. But he kind of missed the chance to swap off. Now he's got his knight pinned on e4. I suspect that was a very, um, <laughs> very reasonable... It's easy to be wise with hindsight, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what does black play here? Good question. Is this position just too complicated for me to understand? Supposing he does play this now. And then queen b6. So he's kind of threatening, well, he is threatening knight d3 in this position. And if queen takes knight, queen b2 is mate. And yeah. mm. he's also threatening knight takes c4. Yeah, that's right. Another. And he's threatening bishop f5. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe, yeah. maybe queen. that bishop c3, I don't know. That doesn't stop knight takes c4, does it? No. About Why, queen, queen b3? S sorry, say that again? Queen b3? Here. Yeah. Queen c7, no. This is a hellishly compl complicated position. I think I'm going to drop my... Oh, I can't drop my queen back. Can't, right. Yeah, yeah, good point. Well made. One, two, three. So it's equal pawns at the moment. It's got this strange, hasn't it? I think Black had something better a few moves ago, didn't he? And so Queen B6, maybe. 
Queen Bee Freeze uh, looks good. So I was just wondering if we can actually take twice and B3 and be and be in exchange for a pawn down, but um, that D pawn's looking rather good, isn't it? Go, go back another couple of moves. Can you play Bishop F? Uh... Well, maybe Queen if Queen D6, Queen B6 rather isn't threatening that, then maybe. Um... <clears throat> Let me play G6 here with the intention of going to F5. I'm making this up, so I'm not saying Carlson had this in mind. Bishop C3 again. Bishop F5. Oh, you've got Bishop takes, and, uh, Bishop takes Knight, Queen takes, and I might be threatening Queen A1 as well. Hmm. I will... Queen E2. Rook, uh, rook, B, rook B8, mate. Well, you've got King D2. Oh. King, it's, uh, actually uh, it's very brave, I have to say, uh, Queen E2, though. And we feel it shouldn't really work. Well, I feel it shouldn't really work. I, th I think my... My main comments on this whole game is that it's a really complicated game and I uh, can't really see what to play here. Shall I stick the engine on? Is that cheating? Uh, whose room is it here? Black. Yeah. Oh, go back to the game. This isn't the game, is it? No, this isn't the game. This is the suggestion of, you know, the, the question arises, why didn't White play Knight takes Bishop? Yeah. And, and I think, if I recall correctly, it was certainly a move. Uh, yeah. Save bishop there. Shall I stick the engine on here? Or well, stick it on a move back. What, what after Queen takes knight? Uh, you've no, got to retake, haven't you? That's the way before he played knight takes bishop. Yeah. What, for what? His position. For, for, for white, yeah? Yeah. No, does it think knight up. takes bishop's the best move for white? Yeah? <laughs> what is the best move for white now? Okay. The trouble is, we could be doing this for the whole game. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 I, I guess yeah. not, you know. Is, um, so it likes Studer's move, but it doesn't follow it up with what we suggested. So knight takes bishop, queen takes knight. So it doesn't play bishop d2 here. Yes, it does. It does sometimes. Bishop d2. Rook takes, pawn takes, well, who? G6 okay, appears temporarily. Oh, it's gone down the list now. Mm. Well, what was wrong with that time that we played then? Bishop C3. Bishop C3. Knight takes pawn with a massive advantage, apparently. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because the bishop yeah. F5. Oh, because bishop F5 now is quite fatal. Yeah. Well, if the bishop just moves, I don't know. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Mm. It just knows how accurate you've got to be, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm sure that Carson would have seen him this. I'm sure he would. And remember, this was a long play game, you know. It was, uh, yeah. And, and it's not impossible he was in preparation. Maybe not. So he's not actually losing. I beg your pardon. Losing, but. Looks like. No, 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 no. It, Throughout the game, there's a number of reasonable moves by both players, but usually they selected the best one because they are very good players, you know. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, but but, but to me, it's also fun. got the feel of a game, you know, of a club game almost, you know. Carson got 125 games without losing before this game. Oh, Colin, you've given the plot away. Yeah, he lost this game. He did. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. No problem. It's, it's not exactly, uh, yeah, uh, obscure news. So, have I gone down the wrong line? Yes, I have. Bishop D2. Everybody probably knew that. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I didn't follow the tournament. Colin, uh, even if we did know, we've forgotten, whereas you've got an extremely good memory. That's exactly right. I didn't yeah. know. 
Could he just go F3 here, Colin? F3 <coughs> must be a move. I would um, probably just go F3. F3, I'm going to play Queen B6. And now you can't play that because I've got that check. Yeah. And you're mated because after Queen takes right. Queen B2. Mm. Uh, it doesn't mean you totally can't play it, but um, <coughs> Knight D3 check is a, a threat anyway in this position. And uh, there's some reason why Bishop C3 doesn't work, I think. I wonder what that reason is. Maybe you just take on C4 with a knight. Oh, so, sorry that you can't take there anyway because it's pinned, obviously. What am I thinking? Uh, so F3 probably doesn't quite do it. What the, the move you played was Rook D E1. Yeah, I was just like that. And part of the idea of that, obviously he's protecting the knight in case the queen comes into trouble, gets deflected or whatever. But he's also creating uh, his king's less likely to be in a mating net now because he can, the king can, can escape. And again, I, from memory, I'm pretty sure that was the top uh, move as well. Yeah. So both players playing pretty well up to now. And here, Carlson played h4. And what his idea seems to be is that he wants to put the knight on um, on f4. Uh, and h4 kind of prepares that in, in, in some obscure way. But basically, it's a rather slow plan. Uh, and the, the best move appears to have been knight g4. Fred taking the knight. Yeah. So, well, he's threatening to take the knight or take on f2 immediately because the knight's pinned. Uh, and um, and it frees up the e5 square. So knight g4 frees up the e5 square for the bishop to come in. So rook b2 is quite a, a strong threat now. And if bishop there, you can play the check. Yeah. And uh, Black's got quite good play here. White can, well, either side can go for the repetition with Bishop D2 and Bishop F5 and so on. Um, I, I suspect Carson was playing for the win here. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, uh, of course, that's what he does by and large. And so he tried, uh, or, or, or maybe it was just such a complicated position he didn't quite come up with the right plan, I'm not sure. But uh, in any case, he played H4, which leads to much interest. And part of the idea is to weaken uh, the king's side pawns with h3, which makes it less uh, easy for white to support the knight with f3, because that pawn is, uh, is, is weakened. But Duda just stopped it with h3. h3. And Carlson uh, put his knight on g6, as I said earlier. He, he intends to go to the attractive square f4. So Carlson found up a, a different way. So he wants his bishop to go to e5. Oops, beg your pardon. And he wants his knight to go to f4, which is obviously optimising his pieces a bit. And g3 isn't particularly possible because black just keeps on taking, exploiting the fact that the, the knight is pinned. So... Uh, Duda came up with a very good defensive idea which sort of generally shores things up and um, threatens to contest the b-file. He moved his rook to e3. Wow. And Carlson played his idea of knight f4. Just try, this is still a fantastically complicated position. And I think it's fair to say that knight takes g2 is probably a threat because the whole king side looks as if it's uh, dropping off a bit there and the bishop might use the f4 square. So Duda came up with g4. So, but both players playing really, <laughs> you know, what's the word, to the point moves and quite aggressive moves really. Carlson just dropped back. And Duda ran with his king. Mm. So, 
this position just remains very complicated to my mind. It's easy to say that one player didn't make a computer move or another player did. Uh, but the fact remains is that both players are working these hellish complications out over the board as best they can and, um, and, and doing a pretty good job of it. Uh, and I really do like the way that they're both playing. Yeah, they're both playing to outdo the other guy. Uh, anyway, uh, moving swiftly on, Carlson played f5, and finally White did take this bishop, and then played pawn takes pawn, mm. which, which obviously, A, it wins a pawn, but more, probably more important, it reduces the scope of this bishop. Bishop check. And he puts his pawn in the way. So it's still a mess, yeah? Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, White's pawns are horrible, uh, but he's got at least one more than, than Black does. He's got two more than Black does at the moment, and he's the exchange up as well. Yeah. So I don't know how confident you'd feel with on the White side if you had a club, you know, if you had a club match against uh, an equally rated player. <laughs> um, I think my, um, I'd be sort of very worried as to what the outcome would be. With Evercar. Queen f6. It looks like um, the knight takes away the flight square for the king, and it looks like white black has got something down uh, on the first rank, but really, he, I don't think he's got a, a, got a specific threat here, especially, especially when white blocks it. Queen g5. White centralizes, and it looks like um, white's. Black's pieces aren't attacking the king anymore, and White's nicely centralised. But Carlson has this idea. He goes to g2, it's the rook, obviously, and then he takes the pawn. And why not, you might think. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a very good move. Uh, he should have played f6, though you can well imagine why he wouldn't particularly want to play that move. But um, it, for reasons which will become apparent, it, it was kind of necessary. He decided to take the pawn. And I'll try not to go ahead too quickly because we're coming up to a critical point soon. F5. Uh, Dude, Akami came back with his queen. Would you like a queen swap, given that I'm an exchange and a pawn up? And, and notice that if there is a queen swap, knight g2 doesn't win the exchange. Because White would always play the check. Mm. Yeah. So, um, again, you know, all of these little tactics are, are very much in play in the game. So, Carlson said, no, I don't especially want a, a queen swap, but thanks for the offer. I'll take one of your pawns instead. Okay. What, what did Carlson miss? Uh, Dude has got a forced win in this situation. Not just a technical win, but a, a forced win. Rookie eight. He's going. He's going to. He's going to play bishop takes g seven once he forces his king onto a. Rookie eight. Rookie eight. Okay. Rookie eight. Check. So I'm going to take it, Julian. Rookie eight. Then I'm going to move my king to eight seven. Yeah. G six. Six. Pardon. F six. Rook h eight. Rook h eight. Rook h eight. He's. The king can't, can't, go there. Can't, can't go there, can't he's, go there. He's forced he's his king to, to, to where he can play bishop takes pawn and pick up the queen. Wins the queen. And presumably Carlson <coughs> must have missed this. The queen takes queen wins. Wow. So, so rather amusingly, or maybe not, I'm not sure, rather strangely, in my opinion, Carlson obviously at this point saw that that would happen. So he played king h7. And now White can't play rook h8 because he just oh. takes the rook. But obviously White takes the rook instead and says, OK, I'm not going to win your queen, but your rook will do very nicely. And White is what? A rook and an exchange up? There's mm. two rooks. Two, oh, two rooks or a bishop. Two rooks or a knight. Right. OK. Yeah. OK. Exchange. And, and he played on forever. 
What? Yeah. Um, so we're, we're probably halfway through the game now. What? We're, we're at move 30. Well, he, he must have done something to avert the threat of Rook H8 check. <laughs> it's still on. <laughs> well, exactly. I guess if he let his, if he let his B8 Rook go, I guess, he's, I, guess he's, I guess he's noticed Rook H8 is crushing. <laughs> yeah, so well, it, it's, it's what um, Colin pointed out earlier. Before this game, Carlson had gone 125 games in, in, in classical, in slow play, classical time control, without loss. His last loss was in July 1918. And I'm guessing that when? he won. 1918. <laughs> 1918. <laughs> 102 years. Flipping oh, hell. Honestly, <laughs> I, I, I watched a film called 1917 the other day. I think it's it's a, good, wasn't it? <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah, I was watching it. Oh no, so yeah, uh, twenty eighteen. So I, I, I won't past nine now. Yeah, very good indeed. Yes. Yeah. So I won't belabor the the game. Hey, what? Especially as I haven't got any more moves apparently. Maybe Carson didn't realise it. He was two rooks up. Black has got a little bit of funny play with Bishop takes F3, F3. picking up another couple of pawns. Yeah. He's got Queen takes D5 as well. What's happened to my game? Okay, sorry, Charles. I think okay, <coughs> I don't have the remainder of the game there for some reason. Let me hurriedly correct that. Blah, blah, blah. Does that give us the moves? Hey, Mars, oh. this is Martin Woolman. There we go. Cool, boy. So, is... Sorry, I, I had two copies of the game. I didn't want to... Um... This is bullet chess. <coughs> okay, here we are, Rook takes Rook. So I'll, I'll go for the rest of the moves quickly. Just to show that even against a strong player, he, he can get some tricks going. I mean, you just think, you, you know, the queen and a bishop against queen and two rooks now. Why are you playing gone? And I think normally he's, you know, I don't think he normally plays play in these circumstances. So his bishop's very strong, but not strong enough to give mating threats because uh, the kings, the white kings, you know, got pieces around. He could probably win by playing rook takes g7 here. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite a lot of pawns for black, though, Colin. So black's got these two pawns after G7 falls extra. So, yeah, you know, not, not trivial, put it like that. I don't know. No, he probably can't. So, so he gives up the exchange instead and wins one of the pawns with rook D4. I think dude is playing this phase of the game very well, but... So... As why you might think, well, I'm playing the world champion. He's got two connected pass pawns on the king side. But, uh, I don't think Duda has any uh, identity crisis like that. Oh, he's got two pass pawns now. Yeah. yeah, but one pawn is faster than two pawns. Yeah. Well, next to Rook, it's also quite an asset. <laughs> oh, Lime, it looks like white can mate. Yeah. Well, not far off by any means. So rook e7 check. Yeah. That's got to be almost there. Queen g7 check. Now you're forcing the king to support his pawns, but you've got a totally crushing move. Rook, That's white. Rook, e, rook e4. Rook e4 check. And now you're going to win the queen. For, well, for rook. Mm. Yeah. So Duda converted the points and then did Carlson's run. And that was that. Carson went home and kicked the cat. <laughs> well, Carson actually lost two games in this tournament. Yeah, that's right. He, he, um, he lost his... He'd already won the tournament. Uh, then he played Aronian, and Aronian beat him as well. Mm -hmm. So he, um, he got his losses out of the way. But he still won the tournament. So uh, read into that what you will. I think he loses for the same reason as Bobby Fisher used to lose, because <laughs> they're trying so hard to win. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. they just push the boat out a bit too far. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, the Evonian game, I, I, I was watching that, and, and he managed to get into a drawn ending and then missed the draw in a rook ending. But the, yeah, that, that was weird, wasn't it? Hopefully, was really taking liberties, wasn't it? Aha, I can see you all again now. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, it, it, it was being a bit cheeky. He really, really won the tournament, didn't he? It was the last round game, so. But it was a bit, he, he, he put sort of a queen's, queen's gambit type position, and he, and he, and he, and he, and he, he made his rook out via h3, and it was all apart from the rest of his forces, and it was all a bit strange. Yeah, well, yeah, it was strange. At one point, Aronia seemed to move his king the wrong direction. Mm, yeah. As well. yeah. Really Your camera's off, Mark, by the way. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. I just thought you'd turn the lights off again, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. I thought All right, we can see Mark now. Yeah. Oh, damn. I think that guy's a player to watch, isn't he, this um, Terry? I, I think the one to watch is this guy, Firuja. Firuja. Mm. He, he had a great tournament. Um, yeah. But he came second, uh, in, you know, above Iranian Karawan and Duda, and he's 17. We were looking at the game for his last week. That was the Budapest Gambit game we looked at. Oh, that's right. Week. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you get the sense at the moment that um, if anybody's going to, you know, anybody's in, in, in the frame to take Manus' title, it's for Uzu, isn't it? At the moment, anyway. Don't you think? Sorry, say that again, Mark. Well, if anybody's in the frame to take Manus' title at some point in the next, you know, 10 years or something, yeah. it's for Uzu, I would say, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. I can't. Yeah, I can't see anybody else. Uh, you know, assuming one of the old guard doesn't do it, which doesn't look likely now somehow. Mm. By old guard, I mean somebody about 30. <laughs> I, well, I saw some, there was um, one of the online things, I think it was online tournament, and they, it was on Chess 24. I think it was Swidler and probably um, Jan Gustafsson, and they had Farouz John as well making comments. Hmm. And he, he was just wiping the floor with them tactically. He was unbelievably fast. He's yeah. yeah. well, he he with Swidler, Swidler and the Swidler, he was doing pretty well, you know. He beat Carson that blitz ton online a while back, didn't he? Yeah, he did. making it half, seven and a half. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. 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 He's so fast, though. And that, and that's just so fast. I mean, you, obviously, you assume Carson's is, but he doesn't, he doesn't really... Uh, Well, that's all. The last World Championship showed that you know really top players can can hold him hold him to a to a draw in the classical, but then he just wipes the floor with people when it gets when it gets fast. Yeah, yeah I must say, and, and yeah, for, yeah, for is, is you know looks like he, he he would at least be able to you know hold his own with him when it gets to the quick play. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Players. Yeah. Good point. I did think though that Magnus could have. I mean, the last game he drew and another one before that, he could have won. Especially the last one, he was winning that basically, and he, and he took the draw. But uh, I don't know. He just thought he would win, win, win the, um, as you say, win, win the rapid play anyway. Well, that, that, that was pretty much it from me, really. Um, I can give you a, a positional test if you like. Would you like that? Yeah, go for it. That was I very, very that. You know said yes. I can't believe it. Uh, well, what is the test? You've done it. Yeah, the Crowthorn guys have done it before. Again. Really? Yeah. Really. It's kind of a positional test, I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to look it up to see which game it was. Oh, yes, it was the um, Atari game, wasn't it? So, we don't want that. I love the way you've got Tony Miles versus Martin Warman on your list, Colin. It's brilliant. Uh, uh, I, top of the list. Top of the list. <laughs> absolutely. Um, I think yeah. I bought a game with Jonathan's there as well, didn't I? Yeah, Richard Webb. Yeah. How's he losing to Richard? Jonathan. <laughs> Is he still there? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't remember. The, what, what game is this? Oh, I've played this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Did you put all your losses out of your mind? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is Carson Tari. Oh, this is correct. Correct. Yeah. 
So we saw the conclusion of this game, uh, which caused much debate. It was the rookie eight move, where there are a lot of other winning moves. Um, this is earlier, and I wish I could remember when it happened. Um, oh, yes. It's uh, all coming to me now. Nice the way he kept his light squared bishop there. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is the position. This is. So white to play and get a massive positional advantage. That is your mission should you decide to accept it. Doesn't look obvious at all, does it? Okay, I'll go and like get, get, get some water again. Comment. So talk amongst yourselves. We can talk about Colin now. He's gone out of the room. <laughs> I'm still there. No, not you, Colin. Colin oh. Well, I know what I'd do. It's all right. Yeah. Doesn't mean so it's it's a waste then. So, any ideas? Yeah. When knight d2, my idea is to swap off the bishops, swap off <coughs> on f6, and then go knight c4, knight e3, and knight d5, and you've got a vastly superior knight against a rubbishly bishop. Okay, supposing idea. I go back with the, the bishop. Ah. Uh -huh. In order to thwart that plan. I'd still be inclined to take off that knight on f6. Mm. Yeah, but you can play this move in a different order and get the what, exactly what you're describing, I think. So if you take the bishop first on b5. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, let, let, let me play that then instead. Knight e8. Okay. Yeah, maybe you should take the bishop first before you play knight d2. Take both of them, then play knight d2. Yeah. Well, oh, that's exactly right. I don't think the move order matters that much. Maybe it does actually. Uh, so bishop takes bishop, rook takes bishop. This is exactly what was played. Okay. Knight d2. Okay. And it, again, I was I was watching the live commentary as this happened, and, and it was also mentioned by Magnus in his post-match interview. And and they were they were being careful with their words, but they were talking about the game as if it was already one for white. Um, basically, the knight will get to c4 and then to d5, dominate mm. the position. And, um, you know, they were <laughs> quite aghast that uh, Tari allowed it, to be to be frank. And, you know, Carlson said something along the lines of, well, what I could encounter some difficulties on the way, but it's, it's strategically winning. Mm. So, it's even if that plays g6 and bishop g7. Well, I, 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 yeah, or even bishop, yeah, I'd have played g6, bishop g7 and f5 if it were me. Yeah, that's what I'm looking yeah. at. I see a problem. Yeah, uh, and even putting the bishop on g5, that's not... G5, I would play, yeah. yeah. And h6, but... Um, you can't come to e3 without being taken off, that's good other I'll, I'll just quickly whiz through the moves of the game. You know, I was going to look at this, actually, after the... Uh, he did play g6, but... He played it really defensively. I'm sure every club player as black would keep the rock on F8 and play F5 here, yeah? But uh, one pair of rook goes off. And this is pretty much the position we saw, uh, nearly the position anyway. Uh, this is the... Um, this is what we saw earlier on, yeah? Oh, um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is how that position arose. Uh, and I thought Tari probably made a decision. He thought, well, I'm worse here, but it's not enough to win. So I'll just uh, play passively and hopefully everything will get swapped off and I'll draw. It seems, if that was his plan, it seems a bit optimistic. Um, so anyway, uh, well done. That, that, that is the solution. I mean, I agree with Julian that I think Black should have played a bit more actively. Though I can see he's not 
yeah, I, I can still see that why it's better, obviously. After knight to c4 to, uh, to d5. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway. Uh, but he can't get to d5 that easy if that plays bishop g5, though. What's the route after that? Sorry, I've just uh, put that on for some reason. So, bishop g5. You play knight c4, presumably. You still want to play knight c4, haven't you? You want to keep the yeah. knight, otherwise you've got nothing. So, g6 anyway? Yeah. Uh, drop the bishop back first. Why? To, to where? Just to be safe. Safe from what? Well, I don't know. I'm just being cautious. Okay. So that's not like you, Julian. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, say rook a6. Rook b8. Well, th then f5 loses a bit of its impetus, but I guess yeah. it's, well, it's either the bishop or the rook, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Still not obvious how that. I mean, if the shall, shall drop the other book back. Sorry, drop the other book back to be eight, seven, seven. Yeah, maybe eight. I don't know. Seven, I think. Yeah. Mm. Let's keep going. And I want to play rook c six and queen a six, maybe. Certainly looks better for white, doesn't it? It's still better for white, but um, I don't know. Maybe it's the devil of the deep blue sea, from Black's point of view. Mm. But but he did seem to be, I don't know, a bit too compliant somehow. Or maybe it's just. It's still pretty point. horrible, but it, but it, but the knight's not coming to d five yet, is it? So. No, it isn't. It isn't. But it's, it's pretty good on c four. No, but, but, it, but it's not bad on c four because it does no, hit d six. No. Yeah. But maybe Black's got to play something like this, but that's... Yeah. Well, it doesn't look that bad, actually, does it? It doesn't. No, D3's weak. Oh, you've got Rook C5. I don't know. It looks good, though, doesn't it? How does it work? Mm. Maybe Rook C6 here. Rook C6, yeah. Queen B8, keep on E5. Or E7, I don't know. E7, yeah. don't know. Not clear, is it? Threatening a win. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> I'll that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so maybe not Queen A4. But yeah, this is where um, club players get it wrong, perhaps. Or maybe yeah. it's just me. No, no. I mean, it's. Get these positional advantages, you've still got to convert them, and it's yeah. not that easy, perhaps. I mean, I mean, I have played a few moves, um, perhaps a bit by rote already. Uh, I'm just saying, why don't he, just thinking, why don't he clear his um, back rank, white? Yeah, G3 makes a lot of sense, really. Yeah, G3, all right. Yeah, all right, sure. No, G3, sure. Yeah, probably. And no, it's just, uh, it's not saying it's a winning advantage. Actually, by actually Black's a bit short of centre rows. He can move the king around, I suppose, with the bishop back to eight. Yeah. Uh, how is, uh, I, mean, how, I mean, how terrible is d5? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's why d5, yeah. Oh, oh, it is. So, sorry, let's play it instead of um, G7 then. Oh, the computer thinks it's quite terrible. Is it? How terrible? Well, not, not, not that terrible, to be fair. I'm 28. That's the win of Archer. Queenie 2. Computer's given. Okay. But why not Queen D7 here? But there's sort of. All of the moves, I think, are natural, are not uh, even considered. Uh, knight takes e5. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. 
something like this you'd have thought would have been better than, than the way he, the rather passive way he did play it but maybe at their level they just see all the reasons why it doesn't work yeah Well, well, chaps, as I say, that's it from me, pretty much. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, Murray. Murray. Like that game. Very instructive. Very instructive.